Today I'm going to spend some time talking about a topic that has a fairly recent history in terms of its presence in the world of business and organizations. That term is social entrepreneurship. And you can really get a lot of different definitions from different people about exactly what this means. But I'll take it from the face of the two words that uh, are the title of this uh, of this episode, social entrepreneurship. And my thinking is that it's the application of entrepreneurial concepts and an entrepreneurial mindset to things that have some sort of social value or social impact, as opposed to pure profitability. So it does have an overlap with the idea of philanthropy and charity and charitable giving, but it brings into play some more recent thinking about how organizations that provide social benefits operate and think about their business models. And the whole idea of organizations that are what we might call charities and how they operate, the whole idea of how they operate has changed. Let's start over again. <clears throat> the uh, When thinking about charitable organizations, what has become important is their long-term sustainability and their ability to adopt and adapt to a changing environment, much like businesses have had to do over the past several decades. The notion of social entrepreneurship really began in the 90s when a bunch of relatively young entrepreneurs found themselves in a position by virtue of liquidity events and exits from their highly successful startups, they found themselves in the position to be philanthropic and charitable. And yet they re wanted to do so in a way that was different than the way their parents and grandparents thought about philanthropy. They found themselves sitting on boards of directors of well-intentioned charities and socially oriented nonprofits, found themselves on these boards and they couldn't help themselves but want to introduce good business practices to the way that nonprofits were being operated. And historically, nonprofits have been the result of a passion and a commitment on the part of folks that have a strong practice in whatever the mission of the nonprofit is all about but very often find themselves at the helm of an organization with a two or three million dollar budget and these executive directors may have likely been been brought into an organization like that as a social worker as a caseworker uh, as somebody serving clients on the street and risen to a position of of leadership, but we're really not well equipped to operate a uh, complex organization and, importantly, to do so in a very efficient manner. So, historically, nonprofit organizations have been very 
positive and uh, very score high on the ranking of passion, commitment, and doing good, but relatively lower on the metrics associated with efficiencies and being able to deliver their services to more people in more efficient and in a better managed way. So when these young millionaires began to become involved in nonprofit organizations, they really felt strongly about moving them into the direction that uh, they had to take when they were launching and managing and uh, then harvesting their uh, their ventures. So in doing so, these young, successful entrepreneurs and now part of nonprofit organizations began to introduce things like measurement of benefits and measurement of activities and managing how the people in the organi- nonprofit organizations were uh, operating and uh, ever attempting to become more efficient as an operating organization. This has pervaded over the last several decades. And one specific example of this notion of applying entrepreneurial mindsets to philanthropy is reflected in an organization that started in Seattle and uh, was founded by some of the uh, so-called Microsoft millionaires who wanted to invest and do good and didn't want to put all of their philanthropy dollars into one basket and um, benefit a single organization. And reflecting on the venture capital model that many of them were familiar with in terms of growing their own businesses, wanted to form a portfolio of investors who would invest their dollars into a fund. And then that fund, much like a venture capital fund, would review different organizations for their viability as an investment and make their investments in these social enterprises much like a venture capital uh, partnership makes investments in uh, startups and early stage ventures. So uh, the name of the organization is Social Venture Partners, and this model became very much uh, a popular way for entrepreneurs and folks that wanted to introduce a new form of philanthropic support. This grew into variations and replications uh, throughout the United States. But that's a very specific and kind of narrow uh, example of this idea of social entrepreneurship. So let's, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into this whole kind of concept. Social entrepreneurship is really about being a change agent in the social sector, much the way uh, traditional entrepreneurs are change agents and disruptors, we might say, in the for-profit sector. So social entrepreneurship looks at different ways to introduce programs and execute on those programs in a very meaningful and effective kind of manner. The social entrepreneur tends to uh, be mission-focused 
and wants to create a sustainable kind of business model focused on some sort of social need and social benefit. And in doing so, they recognize that innovation is just as important to a nonprofit organization as it is to a for-profit organization. So innovation becomes a big part of a social entrepreneurial mindset and a, an approach to social entrepreneurship. The other aspect of social entrepreneurship is that just like in a startup situation, a lot of startups have to manage with limited resources and be creative and be resourceful. And this applies as well to the social entrepreneur. Another important aspect of social entrepreneurship is this notion of accountability and that in the more contemporaneous world of philanthropy, there are more and more and higher and higher expectations that the dollars that are being invested or donated into a philanthropic organization, those dollars are important dollars and deserve accountability on the part of the people that are leading that nonprofit organization. So, in a lot of cases, a long standing organization can practice social entrepreneurship by perhaps doing something different within their own organization that is entrepreneurial, that is uh, doing something new, that's applying innovation. And so large, complex nonprofits are constantly looking for opportunities to be more entrepreneurial. And when we look at how large nonprofits act entrepreneurially, generally they're looking to leverage one of four factors within that organization. Uh, one factor that a <coughs> large organization may wish to leverage to become more entrepreneurial is their competency. That is, you know, what has this organization been able to develop as a critical mass of intellectual capital and expertise and knowledge? So, uh, for instance, a um, an organization that my wife was involved with was a shelter for families and mostly women that were in abusive relationships and was kind of a safe house and a place for women to come uh, and to be relieved from the um, domestic situations that were threatening them. And this was very much about a physical place. A, it was actually a home. And over the years, they developed a lot of expertise in dealing with the psychological and problematic uh, elements, not only of the victims themselves, but also with the perpetrators uh, that were um, conducting this sort of behavior that uh, resulted in this uh, very, very toxic situation. So this organization is an entrepreneurial endeavor, decided to develop programs that weren't based just for their own physical location, but to leverage their expertise and 
make it available on a consulting basis to places like churches or even school districts for those other organizations to be able to deal more effectively with this uh, very difficult problem. So they leverage their competency in dealing with um, uh, toxic and uh, violent uh, domestic relations. Another leverageable factor that a um, large, larger-sized or even mid-sized or smaller-sized uh, nonprofit organization might uh, look at to become more entrepreneurial are the assets, the physical assets they have. So, for instance, uh, we find today that many churches um, have large pieces of property that are understandably utilized mostly one or two days a week, and yet there's a huge property with a large parking lot that more or less goes unused for most of the week. And these churches have looked at this property and have been conducting farmer's markets in the parking lots on the uh, on the low volume days of activity at the church, and uh, these farmers markets uh, have been able to um, generate a lot of capital f- that benefits the um, benefits the church. We also have a leverageable factor of relationships, so we can look at the um, relationships that are that the leadership of the nonprofit uh, has developed over the years and leverage those relationships into uh, opportunities that might take the organization into new, uh, new endeavors. And then we also have the leverageable factor of the mission of the nonprofit. And this relates somewhat to the competency-based factor I mentioned earlier, and that is that when there is a highly defined mission, there is usually a great deal of visibility that's developed around that mission, and that mission can produce uh, spin-offs that uh, become valuable. So, for instance, uh, there might be a um, an organization that provides services to children with autism, and um, that mission has produced a lot of folks with skills that can be adapted and applied in other settings. So the mission of working with autistic uh, youth can then be leveraged into um, advancing those skills into uses in other in businesses and uh, have those skills applied uh, in a number of settings. So the things that a nonprofit is doing in its everyday work can be looked at entrepreneurially to determine what kinds of unmet needs could our nonprofit organization provide and use this uh, entrepreneurial approach to become more sustainable. Now, in the world of nonprofits, the classification of a nonprofit uh, is based on a certain focus and mission. And it's important for a nonprofit that is contemplating these entrepreneurial activities to do some homework as to the 
effect of these activities on their nonprofit status. So it's way beyond the scope of this conversation to provide direction, and arguably it's really uh, something that uh, is important enough to seek legal advice as well as advice from a good uh, uh, financial advisor who specializes in nonprofits to determine the reasonableness of these entrepreneurial activities in terms of the nonprofit status of the organization. Uh, one of the uh, adverse things that can develop is the recognition of non mission based income that uh, the Internal Revenue Service may look at as being taxable uh, and uh, in some cases um, put in jeopardy the organization's nonprofit status. So we can also think about, you know, different categories of how an organization can act uh, entrepreneurially, how a nonprofit organization can act uh, entrepreneurially from things that are as simple as new kinds of events to conduct uh, for the organization and by the organization as fundraising activities. Uh, in some cases, it could be, uh, as I mentioned before, more or less a line extension where uh, the organization looks at some of its competencies and simply extends those into other areas, other new areas. Uh, in some cases, a, um, an organization can act entrepreneurially, probably the, um, the oldest example uh, Girl Scout cookies. So um, certainly Girl Scout activities are important, but uh, the sale of Girl Scout cookies uh, is something that uh, supplements the, uh, the membership income and has provided a, uh, a very important source of um, support for the Girl Scouts over the years. So in attacking this notion of becoming more entrepreneurial as a nonprofit social enterprise, there are several barriers that have to be overcome. Uh, for one thing, just as in any organization, um, it's hard to change, and especially in nonprofit organizations where there's been a very deep and rich history of service in a certain way, adopting new approaches or introducing new ways of doing things can be very problematic uh, and somewhat traumatic, I would argue, uh, within the organization. Um, there's also the outside subjective view of an organization with a nonprofit uh, status, subjective view of them acting in a more business like way, and sometimes that is negatively viewed by the outside world. And when a charity is acting more businesslike and might be introducing fees and things that uh, make it more sustainable in the long run and more entrepreneurial, uh, subjectively, that can be problematic by uh, people that uh, support that organization and, uh, and the outside world. There's also a simple barrier related to language and uh, the 
language of entrepreneurship, of being entrepreneurial, uh, sometimes becomes confusing in a, a nonprofit organizational setting and uh, gets people um, concerned about the uh, the mission and that what might be contemplated is antithetical to the to the pure the purity and the mission that may have historically uh, been uh, been a part of the nonprofit organization. So when a nonprofit organization is thinking about this idea of uh, becoming more entrepreneurial, um, as in the case of regular entrepreneurship, it's important to do your homework, do a business plan, be able to understand the costs involved in uh, doing something that might be innovative and entrepreneurial. Um, think a little bit out of the box in terms of the sources of revenue for these entrepreneurial kinds of activities. And uh, importantly, think about becoming entrepreneurial as a very critical element in being able to become sustainable over the long term and to be able to continue to serve the audience, serve whoever is the beneficiary of the nonprofit, to be able to serve in a very long-term and effective kind of manner.